any chance I could come and do warm up for Dexys on the next tour? And he got back to me the day and went, probably. <laughs> so, uh, so, that's what I Anyway, say I'm John, I'm John, John Scott. I'm, I'm obviously I'm a Scottish person. Uh, back home I get called Jock, Jock Scott. Uh, it's quite, a, it's quite, quite a Scottish name. I've actually got a cousin from Yorkshire called Hovis Broadband Miner Strike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, like, I like to talk a little bit about politics now and then. Now, I was on the radio recently and somebody asked me to name my favourite Westminster politician, and I said it'd be easier to name my favourite infection, right? Uh, and the DJ went, he says, no, no, hypothetically speaking, hypothetically speaking, you're in a hot air balloon with Margaret Thatcher and Tony Blair. He went, who do you throw out? I went, probably myself, right? So, <laughs> So that's it. The Tories, the Tories are back. Uh, the coalition has ended, and I'm worried. With I mean, I'm not a fan of the Lib Dems, but without them putting the brake on, it's going to be a worry. But so, you know, I, I did actually find it ridiculous that Nick Clegg even thought he was in a coalition. You know, he's, he's like, yeah, yeah, I know. He was in a coalition the same way that Emu used to be in a coalition with Rod Hull, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, he said, actually, on, on, on winding up, you know, at the end of his term, he said he was quite proud of what he'd achieved and what you've achieved, Nick. Is, uh, you've actually made the Lib Dems go from a party of government to a party that all of its members could fit in an eight-seater taxi, right? It's, um, it's, it's not such a great achievement. Uh, uh, what was the other one he did? Yeah, that's right, that's actually, this is true. This, there's actually, there's now more former members of the Sugar Babes than... Ah. than, than <laughs> So this, this time at the election, for the first time in my life, I, I, I voted Green. I voted Green. Uh, it's, uh, I did, rather than vote tactically, I wanted to vote where my, where my beliefs lay, and they were the only guys that were representing that. But obviously the Greens, the vote went up, but not as much as it could have been, because because when it comes to the Greens, the media, the media just ignore them. In fact, the media treat the Greens pretty much like I would as a Scottish person, you know, just leave them at the side of the plate, you know. And, uh, <laughs> So yeah, one of my, my favourite things, uh, and, and I want to run up to the election, was one of the Greens suggested that the Queen should live in a council house, right? And, uh, and I don't know how to point this out, but she already does, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> we fucking pay for it, right? Now, now I, I often run into trouble for taking the piss out of the Royals. Now, I don't hate the Royals as individuals. What I hate is uh, that, that we as a society can elevate them to this deity type fucking uh, status, you know, because they're morons, you know, as, uh, well, they're not fucking bright. I mean, na <laughs> Prince Harry, Prince Harry recently said he would like to bring back national service. He'd like to bring back national service because it kept him in the straight. He said, he said it did him, but it kept him out of trouble. Well, it's nice to see a lad from a broken family try to fight his way out of the ghetto, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> 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 you know, Prince, Prince Harry was, uh, was on the telly recently because he was visiting a film studio, right? And while he was there, uh, emerged, uh, while he was at Santos, the posh military academy, they had a nickname for him and they called him Harry Potter. Harry Potter, right? It's a bit shit, isn't it? It's yeah. a bit of thing. How shite are the elite winding each other up? It's like, okay, Harry. We're going to treat you like one of the lads, so you're going to get a nickname, <laughs> marvellous. <laughs> and um, we've been working on this one all day. I don't know what we're going to take him up with this, but brace yourself, brace yourself. <laughs> it's, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> Even Prince Harry would be standing there going, really, is that the best you can manage? For Christ's sake, I'm ginger, and that's not even my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it, it made me, me realise, you know, the, this, this Top Gear fiasco, we, we, we're getting rid of that tip. Uh, it made, made me realise how bad Top Gear is when it, when it actually it struck me that the only decent replacement for Jeremy Clarkson would probably be Prince Philip, right? As, uh, <laughs> it's true, it's true. He's, he's at that fucking puerile level, isn't he? He's like, hey, here we are on Top Gear, uh, give me the script, okay, uh, okay, on Top Gear we. We drive cars, we drive cars every day. In fact, not a day goes by. Oh, hang on, I'm not having any day goes on the show. Uh, <coughs> anyway, I don't know much about driving cars, but I do know how to make them crash in tunnels. So, uh, <laughs> and, and now, now we've got a new royal baby, a new royal baby, uh, Princess. Fuck knows. I, I can't even remember. I'm sure I can't even remember. I'm sure David Cameron would have some lovely advice to hand out to the uh, to, to the, uh, the, the the new royal couple uh, about their new baby. Probably something like "Don't leave it in the pub." Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that, there's another one. So I'm just chucking it jokes. I'm going along here. So a new royal baby. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's what I found. 
I, I found the royal wedding actually quite ominous, you know, because they, uh, they gave her Diana's ring. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, let that be a warning to you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> will she live? Will she die? Uh, I don't want her to die, but you know, I don't really care either. Uh, as, 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 as long as she outlives Elton John. <laughs> no, really, if you had to listen to Candle in the Wind again for another three fucking months, <laughs> you'd probably drive yourself in a wall. So, um. Oh, fuck him, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> it's, as I say, I don't hate it. In fact, you know what? I, I like weddings and, uh, and royal jubilees and that, because I actually collect royal souvenirs, I collect royal tit tat. I think I'm one of the few people in the country that, that owns a Camilla doll. I've got a Camilla doll, I have, and yeah. Used to be a Diana doll, but I left it by the fire. So, <laughs> so anyway, I'm a working class lad, I'm a working class lad. Now they actually say you can tell what class you are by the amount of times you've danced to come on Eileen at a wedding. And uh, I've danced it at a funeral, right now. Uh, you know, they, say, they say we're all middle class now, we're all middle class now. And I must say, as a middle class person, I'm beginning to find that my life features a lot less second properties in the south of France than those TV shows would have me believe, right? I'm, I, I do, I aspire, I try and aspire to be middle class, but my, my palate, my palate catches me out, you know. I don't, I get caught out at middle class dinner parties, you know. It always goes wrong as soon as the cheese board arrives. As as the cheese board. It's, it's never the right cheeses, is it? It's, it? They've never got the triangle one. Uh, or, or the little one in the red wax, you know, or the, or the strings. They've never got the fucking strings, right? Uh, but, but what I really hate more than that is I don't like olives, right? Which are quite a middle class institution, right? But what I hate more than olives, if somebody at a dinner party goes to me, olive? And I go, no thanks, I don't really like them. And they go, oh. Yes, they're a bit of an acquired taste. At that point, I usually go into my bag and go, pickled onion, monster munch. <laughs> bit of an acquired taste. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I, I, don't, I don't know. If, if middle class uh, fucking output is, uh, what's her name, Kate Hopkins, I, I can leave it behind me. Yeah, fuck it, eh? She, the, you know, that's the thing that really upset me about the election. She said if Labour won, she would leave the country, right? And I, I think even though Labour didn't win, she should be made, after what she said about refugees, to leave the fucking country anyway, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she should be made to do it on a really shitty life raft, right? right? Yeah. With, with 12 hungry Somalians, right? Fucking off you go, you bitch. Like, yeah. And, uh, yeah. But the high point, the high point for me at the election was Mary, Mary Black. Now, I don't know if you know her. She's the 20-year-old SMP a uh, student, she actually beat Labour's shadow foreign secretary as part of her school project, right? She actually did. It was part of her school fucking project was to run as an MP and she fucking won. Not only did she beat him in the ballot box, but have you seen her? She could beat him in a fucking fight as well, right? As, uh, and, but the, but the, uh, the media have been trying to rake over her Twitter feed and that and trying to go expose her as a proletariat scum. And, and the thing is, uh, she had this, she put up a couple of great tweets, but one of, one of her best tweets was like, that said this, it said exactly this, it says, Smirnoff Ice is the drink of the gods. I can't handle this cunt. I'm steaming, hashtag, right? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, when the, when the establishment get it wrong is they think that undermines us, right? Yeah. Whereas in Scotland, we're all going, leader, leader, leader. <laughs> Let me tell you about young people in Scotland. I, I was fortunate enough that at the live theatre, I got to do a, a version of Young People's Question Time, right? Which was members of the youth parliament uh, came along and we had a local Tory candidate and a local Labour candidate on, a, on, on the panel, right? And I kind of hosted it, right? And uh, the, the youth parliament is people that have been elected uh, for your local area. Well, the great Car Caroline was the, was the last year representing the North East, right? And uh, so the, the question came up, should we lower the voting age to, to 16, right? Everybody was for it, apart for the Tory, apart for the Tory, right? And the Caroline came up with this brilliant fucking statement. She went, look, if I'm allowed to sleep with a member of parliament, I should be allowed to vote for the bastard, right? <laughs> <laughs> to which the Tory sleazily replied, well, I might change my mind, right? Uh, yeah, horrible, right? To which she replied, fuck you, I'm only 15. <laughs> and that, that was the end of his fucking career, right? So, uh, what, what, 
What's age? What's age anyway? Fucking, I don't know. More young people in politics is what I say. Fucking. Yeah. What's, yeah, yeah. What's age? You just become fucking ugly enough to look wise, and, and you're, you're less controlled by a clatter pack, right? You know, it's, it's fucking bullshit. It's fucking age. Age. Is, look at you see Madonna. I remember her at the fucking Brits when she had a fall. Well, they do at her age, don't they? Uh, <laughs> so Nazis ever laugh big. I, I love that joke when I wrote it. Madonna had a fall. Well, they do at her age. Anyway, Sam. I'm becoming aware of my mortality, I'm 45 now, and uh, there's a thing that happens in your 40s, don't expect, young people won't know this, but a couple of your friends die, they, they just go, right, bang, in their mid-40s, right, and uh, you won't notice, but you get this really ominous phone call that goes, hello, have you heard about Brian, right, now see when you get a phone call that goes, hello, have you heard about Brian, there's only two things that Brian could have done, right? He's either touched a kid or he's dead, right? And uh, <laughs> thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, he was dead. It was such a fucking relief. <laughs> was he, was he oh, he's dead, thank God for that, right? I thought he'd you get for the second there, right? It's, uh, so I'll finish up on, uh, on the thing that, that I told you about, the, uh, the clip that I sent to the, the guy for Texas Minute Runners that he got back to me on. What's about you, Kip? Any, any you, Kip supporters in? I doubt it, right? Uh, well, no need to shout out, just raise your hands, right? Uh, <laughs> Nigel Farage, we thought he was away there, didn't he? But we, we, should, we should know, but anybody that's ever seen a horror film knows that the monster doesn't die the first time around, right? Uh, see, he actually, he, he fucking resigned on the Friday and he went back to work on the Monday. Technically, don't we all do that? We just call it the weekend, right? <laughs> Nigel Farage, he's, he's, he's a bastard, as we all know. Yeah. On the leader of the European election, he actually did make a racist comment. He said he didn't want Romanians living next door to him. Now, however you look at it, that's a racist comment, right? But he yeah. got away with it, he got away with it, right? Because he went on the news the next day and he went, I'm sorry, I was tired. Oh, right. Is that how you become a racist? <laughs> I've, I've never driven six hours back to Wales. You know how you're exhausted, you're on the couch at the end of the day, you're dozing, there's no coffee now. You're going, I'm so tired. I'm so tired, I'm, I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted. I just wish... Oh god, I just wish you could go and round up the darkies. Shit, what happened there? Sorry, I'm tired, I'm very tired. I'm very tired. Don't make me, I'm exhausted, I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted. Oh god, my god, oh god, I just want to, I just want to burn homosexuals. This is dreadful! Every time I nod off, I'm becoming some kind of fucking xenophobe, my god. Don't let me go to bed, I might turn the sheets into an outfit. What's, what's happening here? I'm, I'm asleep walking into fascism, my god. Maybe that's why it's called UKIP. So. Because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not even suspending them for the bad shit they do now. There's a UKIP uh, fucking uh, pr pr prospective member for parliament who uh, made some really r racist comments. Then he blamed it on painkillers. Because that's right. Have you seen that on the sign of your packet of paracetamol? <laughs> you know, it says warning side effects include racism, homophobia, uh, and a general fear of continents, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the language of politicians, and I'll leave you on this. I'll leave you on this. I love the language of politicians. Uh, George Orwell said that you know political language is designed to make uh, lies, lies sound like, like truth and murder respectable, right? And, and, and it's true, they're at it all the time. We've had the VIP paedophile ring thing happen, right? Now, Norman Tebbit went on the telly with that and he went, yeah, there may be a cover-up, there may be a cover-up, but it was an unconscious thing. <laughs> it's just what people did at the time. Now, I've done things unconsciously, right? I've, I've sometimes woken up and there's a, there's a bit of a kebab or a pile of biscuit wrappers and I've, I've no idea how they got there, right? But, but I've never woken up and went, what are these bits of paper? Oh no, I've covered up a paedophile ring. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was it to have shots, right? <laughs> I must tell you, right? I did, I did that joke at the Edinburgh Festival last year, right? But, 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 but unbeknown to me, it was, there had been a Tory party conference in Edinburgh that day. When I turned up at the gig late, 80% uh, of the audience was the Conservative Party, right? <laughs> so, so I did that joke to complete fucking silence, which confused me because it made me get laughs every night, right? So I, su I suddenly stopped and went, What's going on here? Is this a room full of paedophiles? <laughs> <laughs> And this one lone Scottish voice went, no mate, it's worse than that, they're Tories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is awesome, support Jibba Jabba. Cheers now, thanks for having us. <laughs>